everybody, welcome. Um, I'm here today with uh, Dr. Andrew Gard, a professor of statistics and um, computer science at Lake Forest College in Chicago. And I am extremely, extremely excited about this because this, this video um, is about a year in the making. Um, and it really represents, I think, one of the filling one of the biggest gaps in our in our course curriculum at Enterprise DNA. Um, we've talked a lot about tools over the years, um, and we've got we've got great coursework in R and Python and um, all the analytical tools surrounding Power BI. But what I realized over time was that we really needed foundational courses in descriptive and inferential statistics. And I searched high and wide for the right person, and I've got that person here today. Um, Dr. Gard is the um, the founder of um, Equitable Equations. It's one of my absolute favorite YouTube channels for learning statistics. And we've brought him on board with Enterprise DNA to partner with us in developing a course series that we're calling Inference and Uncertainty. And so, Dr. Gard, welcome. Great to have you here today and looking forward to talking with you about this course. Well, thanks. It's good to see you, first of all. Um, I'm really excited for this partnership as well. This course was a lot of fun to shoot, and I'm looking forward to seeing where this partnership goes in the future. Me too. Me too. So let's let's jump right in. Um, so one of the things that we both um, really share is the view that a, a strong foundation in statistics is critical for data analysts. And tell me why, why you believe that. So I think as data analysts, it's very natural when we get a new data set to just kind of jump in and take everything at face value. We compute counts for categorical variables, proportions, um, means, things like that. And um, it's very easy to lose sight of what we don't have at our disposal. Typically, the data that we have is very incomplete. We have a sample of um, uh, of our customers that have responded to questions about how they like our, our product. We've done a medical experiment on some patients when we're really most interested in all the customers or all the patients that we could possibly have. And just because one average is bigger than a certain number that we were expecting, in that sample doesn't necessarily mean that it would be going forward if we were to look at the entire population. And so statistical inference is really just the process of reasoning from that limited sample data, which is what we usually have, to the larger population, which is ultimately what we're interested in. And so the, this course, Uncertainty and Inference, is really intended to help us make that leap. Yeah, really, really distinguishing kind of between real difference and noise. That's right. That's exactly right. Um, and in terms of kind of the objectives and the the audience for the course, um, yeah, you know, why why don't you talk about that? Um, because we 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 were back and forth a lot in terms of you know kind of what we want people to gain from this and kind of who the who who the course is really geared to. Yeah. So in in my day to day life as a college professor, I teach a lot of uh, sort of academic statistics. Here's the math. Here's how you apply a, a t test and so on. And I think very e early on, we agreed that that wasn't going to be the right approach here. I think that users of data need to be able to um, uh, carry out valid statistical inference, but they don't need to know the arithmetic behind it. They don't need to know the theorems or anything like that. So the focus of this course is really intended to be very practical. You have some quantitative data. You'd like to know what sort of conclusions might be valid to draw based on the sample you have. You have some categorical data, for instance, what kind of conclusions would be valid to draw. So um, the major goal I have for people coming out of this class is that they should be able to apply statistical techniques have an idea of what they mean, when they can apply them, what sort of conclusions they can legitimately draw without having to delve into all the math theory that that some of us maybe even have some PTSD from, from high school or college. <laughs> you know, I, when we talked about this, you, you really, you summed it up as statistics without math. Yeah. And, you know, I think, I think that our, you know, our members are, you know, are quite quantitative and, you know, often comfortable with math. But I, I think really, you know, the focus here is on is on the practical. You know, it's it's 
given a certain situation, how do you think about that that situation from a statistical standpoint? And how do you choose the right test and how do you interpret it properly? Yeah, uh, I think that's absolutely right. And I think you're, you know, one of the things I really like about the course is your your focus on kind of recognizing misuse, both from your from your own perspective and from others, you know, so making sure you don't, as an analyst, kind of fall into common traps, and then also being able to recognize kind of good and bad analysis when you see it out in the wild. Yeah, I think that's right. And um, a, a lot of the sort of mistakes that I'll point to in this course, I know from having done them in my own <laughs> practice, they're not just uh, made up, and it's not just vindictiveness on my part towards other people. These are common things that are that are easy to do wrong um and that i that i hope you can help uh help everyone spot and and avoid yeah yeah and and you know having a background in statistics and econometrics as well that all of those pitfalls were were very familiar to me as well um so you know i think you know kind of you know flagging those and kind of acclimatizing people to, to recognize those those common pitfalls, I think, is is going to be super helpful. Yeah, as as I started to learn a little bit of statistics um, way back in time, it it slowly dawned on me how little I really knew and how much about data um, really is uncertain. And that's um, been a been a long journey for me, and I think for for a lot of people. You know, I want to talk a little bit about the course itself, because in the course, you're you're very comfortable with R. And, you know, I'm, a, I'm an R user and a big R fan as well. And, you know, I think it, it integrates great with Power BI. It's, you know, it's incredibly flexible in the sense there's 20,000 packages out there. I mean, basically any analysis you'd want to do, somebody has already done. But you know, we have a lot of a lot of members who use Python, um, who use Excel. And wanted you to talk a little bit about, you know, kind of the choice to use R in the course and kind of what that means from the user perspective in terms of what if I'm not an R user? Yeah. So, um, you know, I generally tell people that are starting out in data that um, the, the initial language or environment you use isn't necessarily the most important, because if you get good at working with data, you can make that change relatively quickly. Now, R is the one I'm most fluent in um, for a lot of historical reasons on my part. Um, and so I'm working in that language throughout here. The focus, first of all, really is on the ideas. And so right. this is a course that will be very, very applicable for someone who has even not used R before. This is not a, a coding in R class. This is a statistics with R. And um, in addition to that, the code that I will be writing, that I am writing in this course is I think transparent to, to anyone who understands the concepts behind them, which hopefully everyone will by the time I'm done explaining them. Um, that's my, my philosophy going through this is that, that R is what I'm using. It is um, a very natural language for this sort of conversation, but it's not um, a requirement from your users. Moreover, as I say in one of their very first introduction videos, I really do encourage everyone to work in whatever environment they are most familiar, um, regardless of what that might be, whether it's Python or something else entirely. Um, the fact that I'm doing the exercises in R actually, I think, gives viewers more of an opportunity to practice in their own environments in which they're most comfortable. Yeah, and and I I totally agree in terms of you know kind of in watching the course you know it's it's in R but it's not of R you know that it it's really I, I find it you know very transparent and I think you're right that it it really is the the focus is on the concepts but I wanted to I wanted to you know I think every course that we do has kind of a a different kind of optimal path through you know in terms of yeah. you know some are more um, you know, kind of watch and then practice. Some are kind of practice as you go. I yeah. wondered if you could talk a little bit about, you know, kind of for somebody, you know, without a, um, you know, kind of an extensive statistics background. Yes. Um, what 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 do you think is the best way for them to to track through this course and then the subsequent one? Yeah. So I think that um, just in general, humans learn by doing. And we learn by doing, especially when we're looking at a computer screen. Um, 
that's just one of the nat just part of the nature of sort of asynchronous asynch asynchronous or remote learning um so i strongly encourage everyone to whatever degree they are able to work through the problem sort of in real time and if i'm describing a certain statistical technique in r open up a screen whatever environment you're working in and work through that problem in real time pause my lecture try the problem yourself see what kind of result i get make sure you get the same thing I have included a number of, of check-in questions that are literally sort of do this problem before moving on to the next video. However, I think a much larger proportion of the course can and maybe even should be done with that perspective. Just before watching me do the complete example, step in and do it yourself. Yeah, I think that, I think that's perfect. And you know, that, that, um, you know, one of the things that we're we're working on developing is, you know, something we call the workout center, and it's it's going to be you know kind of the chance to practice a whole range of skills, you know, th these sorts of you know data analytic skills, statistical, um, you know, DAX, M, you know, kind of the the whole range of SQL, Excel, um, kind of the whole exactly. range of of skills, and so I think you know your your point about you know kind of merging lecture and coursework with you know kind of practical problems is something we're really really going to be focusing on um, oh, that sounds amazing wanted to talk with you about um kind of moving moving out a little bit from the course but kind of about your broader your broader teaching on um statistics and so you know you're you you're, as i mentioned you're part of two of my my absolute favorite youtube channels um and that's kind of how we we got connected you know one of which is your equitable equations channel and one of which is your uh, partnership with greg martin and um who's in the public health sector but you know has kind of very similar views on on data and very similar interests so i wonder if you could just kind of give um, you know, give our members and our viewers just some some background on kind of your work on those two those two projects. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, equitable equations is was an early pandemic project. Um, my college, like uh, everywhere else, went remote briefly, and um, I had to figure out how I was going to deliver content. Um, personally, I've been through a natural disaster before. I uh, lived through Hurricane Maria, uh, which was a Category Five hurricane where I was and was without power for about 10 weeks and had to teach statistics throughout most of it and um, ended up recording a lot of content that just was not usable. And I decided this time I was going to try and record some stuff that I could keep. Um, mm. Some of it ended up being um, pretty widely viewed. And so I've stuck with it and really expanded out to be able to build what I think is some pretty great infrastructure around our programming in particular and um, and I would say um, informed and wise um, data analysis more broadly as in, from with a statistical inferential perspective. Um, the partnership with Greg Martin has been a really lovely thing that's grown just over the last six or eight months where um, he's a, a pretty prominent member of the public health sector in Europe, has a um, public health channel as well as a an R programming channel on YouTube. And um, just reached out to me out of the blue and said, do you want to um, have some conversations and maybe do some do some collaboration videos together online? Um, it's really led in some wonderful directions. We both have a very, um, I think, uh, learner centric viewpoint in the sense that um, we know that there are a lot of mistakes <laughs> when you're learning statistics, data, and it's part of the process. And you have to have a healthy view of that, that you're, you're going to mess things up in order to get them right later on. Um, and, um, it's something that I think comes across in the videos that we do together, that we have both, we both have this very, um, affirming view on, on our own learning processes, as well as the processes of our viewers. Yeah, I really like that. You know, the, 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 the focus on, you know, things I learned today, you know, and, and the fact that you're both expert in this area and yet, you know, each day you're coming up with something new that you've, you've learned. And I think that that, you know, kind of continuous learning process is so, so essential. You know, this field just changes daily and there's always yes. new stuff to learn. 
Yeah, I, I really feel like it's essential to keep that flexible mindset and always be aware of just how much room for growth we all have in our um, work and our, in our personal lives. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. And, you know, one of the things, you know, on the equitable equations that really drew me in was both kind of the clarity and kind of plain language style you've got, but also I love the the kind of over the shoulder data analysis. You know, my probably my favorite videos on that channel are ones where you just take an unusual data set. You know, there was there was, you know, the um one was data set on colleges and universities. There was another one on Scooby-Doo episodes yeah. that I loved. And it was basically looking at it in terms of what's interesting about this data? What are the interesting questions we can ask and how can we how can we answer those questions? And for me, it's like the thing that has fascinated me about this field for 35 years that I've that I've been in it is the ability to uncover the non-intuitive things about your data, you know, to, to learn something that you wouldn't, you know, through statistical analysis that you wouldn't otherwise uncover. And I think, you know, kind of that channel captures beautifully the the thought process of, of an expert in terms of getting a new data set in front of you and figuring out what's interesting about this and what can I learn from it. And, you know, that that's when I see those those new ones pop up, that that always kind of makes my week. Oh, thanks. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that, Brian. Um, the the data analysis in particular is a a, a joy of mine as well. The um, I love in particular recording the videos that you just described, and I do. I'll probably do four to six of them this year. They're they're a little bit more sporadic than my the general content that I get that I release, which tends to be a little more skill based in R, but. They really are my favorite. And whenever I run across a set that um, that seems to have that depth, um, I really look forward to recording those videos. And they typically can run, those can run 20 to 30 minutes. The typical length for, for the videos on my channel are more like five to 10, just trying to encapsulate a core idea. Um, and so it, it ends up being a, a, a deeper dive, which is more difficult to do, but extremely rewarding from my end as well. And that's really, you know, I think at the end of the day, you know, with the when we when our our members finish with the the course series that you're you're working um, with us on, that that's really my hope for for them is to be able to sit in front of a data set like that and ask those questions and be able to answer them in a in a really rigorous analytical way. And you know that that is just what I'm incredibly excited about and just really wanted to thank you for your efforts in, in bringing that, that skill set to our, to our members and subscribers. Well, thank you, Brian. I'm, I'm really thrilled to have been able to contribute this content. I think it's going to benefit your subscribers tremendously. I think it integrates um, so well with the, the content that you've, that you provide. Thanks. So, well, I really appreciate you being here with us today, and um, I'm sure we will talk again in the near future. So thanks. My again. pleasure, Brian. Thanks a lot. Take care. Thanks, everybody.